Welcome to Home and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Like, be in it. Like, we have to learn it. We have to live whatever this is in order for this mind that thinks it knows exactly where it's going to catch up. I feel like a lot of the things that we learn, we do process it mentally as much as we can design something that we need to process it mentally. And it just takes takes some time for the rest of our body to sink in and catch up. Yes. Not so much of a conscious effort. You can be intentional about it, but you're also not overthinking yourself and like doing a double take at everything you do. Because that's what I see. That's what I've noticed with people who I've talked about who's been in human design or like that they worried oh am I living as a projector properly quote unquote yes yes living my life and I'm like oh no like every time I hear that it's like alarm bells because who's to say what are you doing properly or not and even if you are quote unquote doing it not properly you're still learning like yeah so yeah I understand your concern with with prescriptive almost because it feels very prescriptive right sometimes it definitely can be um and I'm starting to feel this way with all things in human design it's like I don't literally mean this but in some ways it's like just learn it once like just get told or whatever read your information one time and then never again (laughs) like just then go live it and like see what comes out of it that would be my my only prescription for people is like and and that's not what I did so you know it's like whatever but now that I've gone through it I'm like I see how much I just mentally wanted to have it all figured out so badly and it really did I can see now like pull me out of living my design now it was my process and it's what I had to go through and that's all fine <laughs> right right but like I wouldn't yeah. recommend it <laughs> uh, that's so fascinating though because you know so much of our process and such an important part is kind of going to the the corners or like hitting walls mm-hmm. we have to, because we can see that this place you know, this other direction has a door. People are showing you the door. How to open the door. And if yes. you know what type or profile, whatever it is, maybe you need to hit, hit your own dead end. Yes. I and, love that. And I think sometimes with like the well intention of people wanting to support others, they're like, okay, here is the path. So you don't have to kind of hit the dead end and go through the difficulty. And I'm not saying that is bad. Of course, we're here to support and lean on each other. But the person has to reach their own conclusion yes yeah the only reason why I've come to this conclusion is because (laughs) I did all of the stuff it's like and and I I love what you're saying and it's so wise and I feel like there's um that's when like gatekeeping starts to come in where it's like oh no you you shouldn't go here yet or like this is too deep don't go into this yet or like whatever and it's like that's that's not actually serving anyone. I understand the intent again because now now I would want to say the same thing to someone, but that it doesn't help anyone. <laughs> it's like just give everyone all the information, make it as accessible as possible, and let people, as you said, reach their own dead ends and discern. Yeah, something yeah. that I like been very like observant and mindful and like watching communities. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> I think before I I stepped into doing what I do I was just lurking (laughs) watching Mm -hmm. and I realized so often people give their power away Mm -hmm. as in like hey you fix me you help me and I I totally did that with everything that I've done because I'm like hey you're the person who I admire and you got to where you are so you can tell me almost like what's best for me 
And it wasn't until like my first yoga training and the astrology with that I practiced where, you know, I remember telling her like Tara, she's the one, one of the co-founders. I'm like, thanks to you, you know, I was able to heal my heartburn and all that. And she's like, no, I did nothing. It's like, <laughs> excuse me. She's like, no, it's all you. And she kept saying that. It's almost like I was trying to like give her like an appreciation, a compliment. She's like, no, it's all you. I'm like, why are you not taking this? And years later now, I'm like, yes, this is reflected in everything she does. You know how they mm. move. It's about you are your own person. Mm-hmm. What feels good to you is yours. And that was such an empowering like nudge for me to really take in all the courses and at the end discern it. Mm-hmm. Having a leader who's like, yes, this feels great for me right now, this yoga pose, but what about you? <laughs> like our injuries are different. Our bodies are different. What we do every day is different. So if you you can look at a pose in, in yoga context and make it seem mm-hmm. like, this is the way to do yoga. And she's like, no, yoga is whatever you're comfortable. And hmm. that like 10 years ago was so different from what mainstream yoga was because it was very like, almost like a circus, like people hmm. who could contort themselves the best were the ones who had <laughs> huge followings and they were always pushing you. How do you work out so that you can do this? And and I bought into that as well and injury. And then it wasn't until she's like, no, like you matter. <laughs> you yeah. have power. And she didn't say it directly that I was like, whoa you're my own person yeah yeah wow yeah so many thoughts <laughs> I feel like that's such a good way to like such a helpful analogy or like parallel description to think about human design too the way you were describing the yoga poses and they're not being a right in a wrong way and then also what comes to mind too is like the there is a balance right because I do feel like in some ways we There can be like that harmful societal narrative of like, but it's all on the individual or like the individual has the power. So let's leave it all up to them. And it's like, but it's not that either. Like, it's not fully that extreme either. It's of course, as we always (laughs) get back to an end, every conversation is like, it's both. (laughs) It's somewhere in the middle, some balance. Um, But it really is because, yeah. that works it works really well when two people or a group of people have really put a lot of like love and intention into connecting with themselves and feeling some sort of empowerment within themselves but there's also like a period of time where you weren't there and I wasn't there and it could have been I don't know now I'm just like going all over the place but like yeah, there, there is, there is obviously harm done also when we're in those other spaces. So yes, and like you can also you you can show up with the best of intentions, and I know we've talked about this in human design lens, and you know in our training and all that. Like, how do you ensure you don't do harm? And there is no hundred percent way to to make that happen because you can show up with the purest of intention, but something you might have said could have triggered someone who is in a completely different space and it's not so much yes we want to prevent harm we want to hold a safe space but it's also what do you do when harm does when somebody does come to you and say hey harm happened yes that's exactly what I was just thinking it's like the accountability piece I once I, I used to work at universities and did a lot of stuff with hiring and there was this study that they did have I already told you about this where they did this study around bias and like um so I don't know if this is like this everywhere but in universities there's always like a committee of people that hire new people it's like five or six people or whatever search committee and um they did this study where people they were trying to prevent or like fix bias within hiring right around like race and gender and sexuality and all those sort of things and so they did it where they had everyone name that they were biased, but they wouldn't, they didn't do anything else. They just were like, we're biased and whatever. And like, let's move on. Anyways, this whole thing was around like, basically it emboldened them because they didn't do any talk around like what their biases were or how they show up. They just were like, we're all biased. Like similar, like we're all gonna cause harm. 
and then they like moved on and they ended up being far more biased in the hiring <gasps> process than they would have been if they never addressed it at all because oh, it was almost... like gave them permission almost like well we're just biased so we don't have to acknowledge it or like address it or do anything about it see that's like the problem with so many companies I think those like deep rooted issues that has come up in the past couple of years they think they yeah. can fix it and slap a sticker or like a get a multi rainbow yes. and we support like it's so deep it's and it's I think also like what people don't talk about it a lot or maybe they do <laughs> is that it's so unconscious it's yeah. part of our being and even though your intention is not to harm it is harmful but yes. because people are already offended and defensive nothing you know there is no no way yeah. to work through it it isn't until they put their defenses down easier said than done but also being willing to hear both but then there's also the other party that is like so mad and angry that is like ah, let me unleash it and yeah like what I'm saying is not like a solution or anything something I've seen and I know how difficult it is and I'm just like holding both sides and I'm just like it, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I'm in my other life. This is what I did before <laughs> I was doing facilitating around this exact thing, <laughs> like yeah. subconscious bias and like, how do we acknowledge it and address it? Um, so I feel like I'm like, I was like, oh, I'm like back, <laughs> back in my old life. Not that I've stopped talking about these things, but I just haven't talked about them formally in a long time. Yeah, well, how was, like, if you don't mind sharing, how was the experience of facilitating these type of conversation um, <laughs> it was all over the place obviously it, like it completely depended just like in anything when it comes to awareness it completely depended on where people were at along that spectrum and I feel like um, it's it's kind of it's like uh, now I'm like just finding all these parallels but it's like anything in the same thing like just like a human design training it's like you can you can create a space you, well there's several different options I feel like you can like deliver the information and like see where that goes but you can also create an experience where people actually feel changed within that experience but then also like it still was just like a one day retreat or, you know, a three week program or something. Like it was similar in that way where it's like, I had to detach a bit from what the outcome of the things would be. And um, that can be challenging in, a, in something like that where you feel, or at least it was for me, challenging around when I like felt so strongly about it and so clearly saw how much it was impacting the world and relationships and how we be and all those things and then sometimes and now I'm just reflecting right now like I feel like sometimes I would downplay what I was actually contributing because it's like well it's just one training or it's just one conversation or something and now I'm like yeah but one conversation like puts someone on a whole different trajectory but I think that was hard for me to hold at the time I didn't really answer your question, but that's just what came to my mind when you said it. You totally did, because I'm trying to imagine myself, and I would feel like if I if I think it hasn't changed anyone, I would feel mm -hmm. so self-conscious. I'm like, did I not do it properly? Even though, logically, I know that this kind of change takes time. Yeah. Like, a session, just being able to talk about it doesn't solve, like, <laughs> these deeply rooted issues, but it... It's just like so many like ideas and conversations about business is what it's bringing me back to how sometimes in business we, you know, we, we need to be able to detach ourselves, but it's also an extension of ourselves. Yeah. And we, as much as we're offering a space, we are also being transformed by the people there. Yes. Yes. And it's, yeah. And also being able to just say like, I'm here to lead, but I'm also learning with you all. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I had a very similar experience. I'm realizing right now as I'm talking with human design, as I did with um, mostly what I was doing was supporting people in unlearning supremacy culture and just like the um, 
pillars, if you will, that kind of hold up this way of being this white supremacy culture. And, and I don't mean that a lot of people think that means like the KKK and I don't mean that. I mean more like the culture that we're in, you know, in on a regular basis of whiteness and just what that is like. Um, I've had people think before that I was like helping people get out of more like cult-like. Right, um, right. Yeah, and I was like, ah, no, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I could, but no, I don't know. Anyways, um, but I had a similar experience of realizing that me speaking from my experience was actually was the most powerful because I would when I first started doing facilitation and trainings I was repeating things that other people have said and I was especially looking at like women of color and what they were teaching and wanting to me, knowing that I felt like I got it and saw it and wanting to convey that to white women specifically then and it would always fall flat, at least to me, it always fell flat because it's like, that was not my thing to share. Like you you too could go listen to that person. You too could go read their book or whatever it is. Right. But when I started sharing from how have I unlearned supremacy culture and whiteness and all of these like harmful characteristics, then it was completely different. Like the resonance changed, the feedback that I got changed. And I feel like that's a similar thing with human design, which we were just talking about. Like I did what I did. I'm realizing now, like I did the same thing where I wanted to, um, oh, I'm like, oh, this all comes back to my undefined mind and not wanting to look <laughs> stupid. It all comes back to that. Um, but anyways, I, I wanted to like know everything about human design. I wanted to be able to speak to every part of it. And it's just not nearly as powerful as me just speaking from my experience. But I wanted that so badly. <laughs> but like, do you think it's only the undefined mind? Because as a four, we yeah. also need foundations. And sometimes out of curiosity and hmm. out of learning, we want to learn those things. So I'd, it could be, you know, influenced yes. by each other. Yes, I think it's probably both. But I think what like kept me going <laughs> was my... I think what was like, yeah, the motivation behind it was probably, I feel like I could trace everything back to my open mind and open heart. Like that combination is so intense <laughs> of like, I I've never felt like I was stupid. Like I know you and I have talked about that before and you've yeah. had more of that feeling where you felt like dumb before. Yeah. And I've never really felt that, but I have felt wanting to prove that I wasn't. Like, uh, it's more that energy of, like, I want to prove to you that I get it all. Like, I, I never had that really experience of, like, yeah, maybe I'm not intelligent. I always felt pretty, like, in touch with my intellectual capabilities, probably because I had to younger. But um, it was more, like, I, I want to prove to you that I am not stupid and that I know everything and that I get it and that you can't like outsmart me in some yeah, way. Yeah. That's yeah. so fascinating. And like, because I remember we also talked about like the 48, like the shadow expression, yes. the fear that is attached is the fear of inadequacy. Yes. So, ooh, that energy drove me mm. to, it made me feel unstable or like it also added to the open head of mind because if I wanted to show up doing the things that I love, I felt like I had to know more hmm. than what I currently know or that I needed a degree to prove that I was able to help someone, that I need all those things that I didn't have. And I, yeah, like the conversation, yeah, I felt so dumb academically. Like mm -hmm. even though I was some of the top students, I had to force myself to do it because otherwise I would be punished <laughs> at home. Hmm. So I knew like I it's so funny like I knew that I was smart I knew of my capability and everyone didn't see it so mm, a part of me was mm. like I don't care because you're not important to me it hurts to disappoint your own parents <laughs> but I'm like because I have the defined heart I'm like I'm approved to you but not yeah. in like a fighting I'm like just you wait so yeah. that drove me I'm like just you wait and like you know eventually years later when I became my own person and lived by myself I was able to do that but still once in a while, I might, even in advertising, I knew a lot of people underestimated me. And I was like, it's fine. I don't want attention right now. And you're probably not 
my people. And I think it's because of the defined heart that was keeping mm-hmm. me protected, like a little bit of pride and also like, you don't know me, but if it was someone close to me who thought those things, then of course it would hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so interesting to think about, like the more internal way that the defined heart was showing up for you, more like, just you wait or like, I'm good and you'll see it. And then for me, it was so external. It was like, I'm going to prove to all of you, <laughs> like, I'm going to make it known <laughs> that I'm the smartest and I get the most and whatever it is. Um, yeah, there was nothing quiet about my <laughs> desire to prove <laughs> that I was smart to everyone else. It was quite, quite loud. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I mean, we're also surrounded by, well, I don't want to generalize, but our society or the school system is about who is the most eloquent, who is like mm-hmm. the most loudest. Those were the things that were praised growing up. I don't know how much the school system has changed. I know it has changed. And also like I went to school in a completely different country, like in mm-hmm. Peru, but it was an American school. So mm-hmm. like so many nuances. And then when I went back home, I spoke Cantonese, broken Cantonese. So I'm just like, oh, my brain. <laughs> Yeah, literally, I just felt it. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> my brain. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, that's interesting. When you say it was an American school, what does that mean? What does that look like? Does it, like, people from the U.S.? We had some, Ran I don't school. know how, I don't know if it was founded. We don't know a lot of the history, but the, the former name is Peruvian North American Abraham Lincoln School. <laughs> that was our former name Abraham we had uni- Abraham Lincoln we had like uniform <sighs> had some some teachers from the states come and teach us we had Spanish classes as well so it was like a mix it was bilingual hmm. okay yeah that's so fascinating do you <laughs> I could go on like a whole spiral around the U.S. like it's just I the the more and more that I find out about the ways that we just like infiltrate and <laughs> whatever yeah we don't have to get into <clears throat> it was definitely an interesting experience because I I did I was born in Peru and then moved to Canada like so I went to kindergarten and first grade here because in Canada in so or in Peru? Yeah, in Canada okay in Canada. okay so technically my second language aside from my maternal is English so when okay. I went back to Peru I was this Canadian English girl who couldn't speak Spanish Mm. So it took me, so it was a good thing that I went to an American school because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to communicate with anyone. And then after that, when I finished high school, I came to Canada. So I've been switching between languages, but having the American connection, I guess, made me less foreign when I came to Canada because Mm -hmm. I was westernized. But then I'm also aware of how much now that I'm like outside of that bubble that we were influenced by American culture. Like, we would mm-hmm. celebrate American Thanksgiving, American... We would also get bomb threats during that time. That's, like, a, nothing really happened. I think one time they found, like, a dummy bomb or something. But, like, you know, we got a little bit of the American experience in Peru. It was That's silly. So awful that that is the American experience, but it is. Um, why Canada? Why? I, maybe because yeah. some... My aunt was here or something, so my parents thought maybe the next... Another spot to immigrate might be like a safe place mm-hmm. yeah but they're still your parents are still in Peru yeah they're still in Peru no. they went back they love Peru except for the <laughs> earthquakes there's been a few earthquakes like lately they're oh. like oh I think we're gonna retire earlier <laughs> and we love Peru but this is like <laughs> scaring us every time yeah I can imagine um are, are you a sibling you're wait just one sister yeah I have one sister she's in Peru currently she was in university okay. here she went back to help my dad with his business but no her, she's coming up to her Saturn return so life is it's all about to change <laughs> yeah no pressure <laughs> remind me what's her profile again uh she's a 6'2 oh that's right oh that's right 6'2 yeah yeah interesting I wonder yeah I wonder I because I've heard I've heard specifically that four sixes have usually have really challenging Saturn returns because it's like a shift on both line levels kind of even though we're not really one threes in the beginning but you know like it can carry more of that energy oh, interesting I don't know yeah about that I don't know I mean I don't know what that's based in but yeah yeah I've heard that before but I wonder if 
someone with a 6'2 profile because of that still, that three, you know, moving out of that three energy, if it will be a challenging Saturn return or not. That'll be interesting to see. I felt, yeah. I still feel very connected to the third line energy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel connected to that energy? I do in a sense, but I also feel, especially in the last year, I've felt the retreating energy a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it again. <laughs> like, yeah. Agree. Agree. How does the, oh, go ahead. I'm like, I feel the aloofness. Like the yeah. more I read about it, I'm like, oh, what did I do? Because I had a lot of FOMO in my first 30 years. Like I wanted to do everything. I'm like, oh, let's do that. Like, and I would feel, ang- it could also be anxiety, not knowing how to self-regulate. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I want to go to this party. Oh, but I have to do work. I need to clean the house. I wanted to do everything. And I feel like I had more energy back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but like the, the third line energy that I was talking about, a lot of my my experiences growing up was like doing things many times and like the silly thing that I I think I've shared a story a couple of times I remember waking up in the middle of the night I couldn't sleep so my mom was like well let me warm up some milk for you so we're at the <laughs> stove top and it's the spiral stove yeah you know so I saw it she's like don't touch it you're gonna burn your hand and I'm just like mm. one day I'm like I gave it I touch it and I burn my head I'm like no and then this happened again maybe a, a couple of weeks later I don't know what the time frame was I'm like if I do it faster <laughs> so I did it fast I'm like no it didn't work but like that kind of pattern has been repeated in so many different you know circumstances in my life I'm like okay I know people told me I shouldn't do it but I'm curious obviously knowing uh, that it wasn't something like you know completely dangerous but silly <laughs> that is so I don't think I was ever like that but I think I was too scared I was terrified I'm defined spleen yes I was just gonna say I think that might be the difference between yeah I that just like hearing about that I'm like oh no I never <laughs> like an never. alert no no yeah. no yeah like danger danger um side note I used to drink warm milk every night that's so funny as a kid yeah it comes all so pretty <laughs> yes but now I'm like oh never um it something you were talking about reminded me of the motivation of undefined centers you were saying like I don't have as much energy or sorry that the energy behind undefined centers and how they can motivate us I feel like pre-30 like again that that desire to not look stupid or like the desire to be free of pressure undefined root like all of those things it used to feel so powerful yes Yes. it was like it was like oh yeah I I really do (laughs) I like look back and I'm like dang I lived 30 years on that like fear of not looking stupid and that moving me forward and like trying to get rid of pressure and all of those things and now I'm like oh, I know I know we don't want to look stupid <laughs> but I don't have energy anymore <laughs> like we're just gonna have to deal with looking stupid or like we're just gonna have to deal with like this pressure that's coming up like it just doesn't propel me in the ways that it used to oh I, I felt that definitely like hmm. I amplify everything and I responded to everything, but I was also like, is it something I really want to do? Sometimes it was like people pleasing, whatever it is. But I know we talked about this. Sometimes I feel like our open centers, we need to go through them. Like the shadow mm-hmm. expression, like we're always fluctuating between the, the shadow expressions and the light expression. I don't know how else to say it. Like, this, you know, but I feel like they can be so beautiful, even like to look back and reflect on because it gives us so much more compassion and empathy Mm -hmm. about how these centers can go a little bit out of whack but also it brings us back closer to ourselves because Mm -hmm. being able to recognize the things that I did that I was motivated and driven by it but now I know it's not good for me but even just having that awareness and being able to forgive and release it's, yes I don't know it's so important so whenever when I hear people talk about I'm in the shadow expression I'm in the low expression I'm the not self I'm like yes but it is still you <laughs> it's yeah kind of bad with you it's still you you're just experiencing life you just have yes. awareness of it yes I I have been two things one I've been describing them as the stressed expression and the spacious expression oh, because like that. that's actually like more what it is for me it's like and I'm in that stressed 
nervous system fight flight freeze situation like that's when that tense expression starts to come out and then when I am feeling more spacious of course like literally I have more space to um yeah it's just like a a lightness I feel like that comes with the higher expression or whatever it is um what was the other thing that you just said that made me think of? Shoot, it'll come back. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what it was. No, it's okay. mm. don't chase it. It's gonna come back. <laughs> no, I know. Like, I keep chasing it. It's like, no, it's always there. It's in the tip of my tongue. Uh, that's actually been a very big um, learning for me, and perhaps that's a open mind undefined head thing is I, I feel like some people you can see advice either way like some people will be like okay we'll write down everything because you will probably forget it or like it'll disappear or whatever it is and for a while I feel like I took that route and now I'm like it'll come back <laughs> if it's important it will come back to me and that has been a much more, much more enjoyable way to relate to those things rather than trying to grasp them mm. so hard. Um, yeah. Uh, you- I can appreciate that so much because it's almost like you're, because when we talk about these energies, it's like we've talked about it, like it feels very mental. Mm-hmm. So how do you put all those tips and tools that we learn into practice and it's just by observing yourself and seeing what feels better because mm-hmm. for someone writing it down might feel so might help them and then for someone else it's like I don't need to I don't need to stress and it's just we're all so different and there's no it always comes back to like there's no one way to do anything but it's just honoring yourself at the moment because maybe you don't want to write notes anymore even though that's what you did for 20 years maybe you want to try yes. something different yes that you you just brought back what I was going what I was thinking <laughs> and it, it he, yeah and it was that exact thing and I feel like we we reiterate it to each other in so many different ways but we have this I feel like we have this similar thing where we come back to like go through your process just go through your process <laughs> whatever it is whether it's like experiencing the stress or the shadow experiences of um centers I almost said low centers of centers <laughs> or you know going deep into intellectually understanding human design for two years maybe someone yeah. has done that before <laughs> <laughs> um, like go through your process whatever it is like you can never get to the other side like we can't think our way to yes. this understanding or this change or this whatever like you have to be in it and I feel like it's so frustrating and beautiful and perfect (laughs) but it's it's like I can look back now in a lot of times in my life where subconsciously I was trying to escape the human experience like let me just be somewhere else let me just have something figured out like let me just be beyond this in some way and I feel like my consistent work (laughs) is around being in this experience that I am having and I am reminded every time that I do that that that's where the wisdom comes from it's it proves it proves correct every time I'm just using all the language now (laughs) but like it does it every time when I'm just in it experiencing the thing learning from my experience yeah It, it never works the other way trying to rush through it trying to intellectually catapult myself somewhere else yeah and yeah Yeah. I know it's like I'm bringing in online business a lot because I've had a few conversations of people who are or like people who message me they're often at a spot where like I see my dreams I can feel it Mm -hmm. but it's been years and I'm not there yet and there is a lot of frustration and I get it I get it because again thanks to the shadow expression that I was there I was trying to think my way into alignment I was trying to think and strategize how to get there and I'm wondering if a part of it's because we're so exposed to the noise and to other people's like formulas and success stories 
that we think, hey, this person was, you know, they were living in um, food stamps and now they are million, multi-millionaire. Yes. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. they did that. So is it like, how do I get to that point? Do I just start doing? And then we hear about those stories, we relate to those stories and we think, yes. hey, you know, maybe this is how we get there. And I think that's our mind trying to make sense of the world, trying to reach for safety. And, you know, we want to plan it out because of safety. And again, we've talked about foundations where we feel kind of wonky in a transition period. And sure, we want to grasp for safety, but we yes. forget to live. Like you, you are not someone who's just thinking their way. You're someone who's eating, you have relationships, you have a body, like, how are you taking care of that? And we get so mental because we are desperate and we really want to wait out and it's human. But, <laughs> and I think we've talked about like, even if we do a group session, it would be about like, how do you connect your body? And not yeah. in just a way, in a, in a superficial way of like, oh, blah, 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 let's do some yoga and feel good. It's actually, yes. like, is your body tired? Like, where is, where is there some tightness? Where is some imbalance? Because sometimes in addressing those things, it opens up and it leads you to the answers that you were trying to get mentally. Jess, I just, I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good you're on fire today um I feel like you're everything you're expressing is like and perhaps me too is like the four six is just like pouring <laughs> out of like especially having the four on the mental mind side and the six on the body side like it makes sense to me that we have had this tension a lot in our lives around like intellectually wanting safety one and like that um I actually just heard this quote the other day that to me was like so for one energy was like not the profile but like the energy of the one and the energy of the four it was like real real security comes from connection I was like whoa that's Ooh. such yeah <laughs> the the one for energy anyways um but then the the six line body of like, um, hello, we have to like be in it. Like we have to learn it. We have to live whatever this is in order for this mind that thinks it knows exactly where it's going to catch up. And I also think I've heard too around six, six line energy that like perfection, right? Like a lot of times we can see the actualized way of doing something or like how something could come into full beauty and perfection, whatever that is. And to also be in the experience of that, yeah. not necessarily being exactly what it feels like right now or looks like right now. Um, yes. That's been something I've been sitting with and learning again recently of like, Yes, but I want it to look like all of these things. Like I want, I see this vision. I, I, and it's even beyond, I realize as I'm saying that it's not even around like necessarily a superficial, it is in some ways, but it's not necessarily like a superficial, like the way that it looks. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to describe this. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it is partially that, but it's also like you have this sense of how it could be yes, yes. the most can, full the most yeah <laughs> like I feel it in all my bones and it took me a while to really admit and be okay with even the desires or the vision I have like I want fancy things I really yeah. do like me too I don't need to be embarrassed about it I want fancy yeah. things I like to design fancy things doesn't mean that every way I live I'm gonna be like you know wasting my money because there's so much conditioning there's so much conditioning about what we should be desire and also like the attachments the unconscious attachments we have around money what does it mean if you are a millionaire what does it mean if you have all these fancy things and I'm like heck no I take care of myself and mm -hmm. I live in this material world and that can be very defined heart like you know I want things mm -hmm. to feel nice there's nothing wrong with it it's just it helps feed my energy I'm not being mm. greedy and I find that I'm trying to defend myself right a part yeah. of like yes yeah. uh, and I'm, like, I'm not being greedy and I'm just like oh it's like tension but I'm like no shame I want fancy things you just start crying <laughs> yeah, I'm like, not I'm being greedy the fancy things. I'm not hurting anyone <laughs> I completely know that experience yeah <laughs> 
Um, yeah. <laughs> Every time that I stop to try to, <laughs> like, go, I, it shuts down. As we've talked about before, it just completely goes blank. I'm like, wait, there's so many things. And then I try to say them, but I'm like, um, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Nothing's coming out, but yes to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's perhaps, it. This is the end. <laughs> yeah, I was like, perhaps that's a very um that's like the highest generator MG compliment is just to say yes. <laughs> like, yes, that's it. <laughs> but then nothing else comes out. <laughs> right. Like, do we need to follow through or explain every single thing else that we're doing or want to do? There's also this. I don't tricky, know. <laughs> everything. It can be everything, conditioning, pretty tricky experiences. Yes. Yes. Did we just record a podcast? I don't know. I think um, we might have. <laughs> that was I, fun. <laughs> every you literally everything you were saying, I was like, yes, yes. It was yes. you. It, you were giving no. me the fire. <laughs> you giving me the fire. That's what I appreciate about it. It's like mutual. Like yes. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, ac- actually, maybe if we want to continue the conversation, something around our designs I, it's so fun to be able to see them now and I feel like I don't know if this is true but the the feeling that I get is because both of us have done a lot of self-love self-work self <laughs> all of it I get to see the energy so much more clearly in our dynamic than I have been able to you know like for a lot of my life it always felt kind of murky like is this you is this me and is this mine like it just right, feels right. it felt yeah cloudy and in our dynamic I'm like whoa I can really see like my direction or my voice come out and then I can see you amplify it and I can see me getting your defined heart and defined spleen and energy and I can see me amplifying it and it's like this is energy I actually want to amplify, which I think is part of the lesson is like, it's not, we've talked about this many times before, but it's like, it's not about not being conditioned. It's not about not experiencing energy, quote unquote, outside of us or around us, but it's actually becoming wise around like, um, yes, I will take your conditioning. <laughs> like your conditioning is helpful. Your conditioning is useful. Like your conditioning makes the world a better place you know like that's the type like that's the place that I feel like I've gone to and have been able to get to through our dynamic and just reflecting on our dynamic is like I don't know like it's it's there's such power in being like okay I'm gonna definitely plug into your energy right now like I'm definitely gonna amplify whatever this is do you feel that way or notice any of that oh I felt everything that you said. It was so like, beautifully put. And it's it's so true because, I mean, if we don't use a human design language, another language mm. that people use is like, mm-hmm. you know, surround with yourself with people that feels good. And I think yes. so much of it, it's because it's not just, oh, it feels good to me, but it's also recognition being seen, but also being able to like, let your energies flow, right? We all want to feel connected to people. We all want to express our desires and dreams or even vent when something's Mm. not feeling well and having energies or space where you can move that along is you know it's healthy for you and hopefully the person and you know again into the context that everybody knows their boundaries and they're respective of each other and all of that because you know the the other side can happen as well but we do need each other just because we have open areas yes you are sensitive to the energy but I don't feel it at all. Like you mm. also have a lot of open centers. And I think at the beginning, we noticed how people talked about the open centers almost as these like fragile yeah. places. I'm like, I don't feel it. I have completely open head and all those other things. I'm like, I'm fine. But because of the inner work where I'm like, yeah, I feel those energies. I can release it. I, I don't feel that they affect me at all. I feel those are also the source of my wisdom. <laughs> yes. 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 And I feel one thing, one, a visual came to my head when you were talking earlier about like us coming together and something that was coming to mind was like, we, we do, we come together to move energy. Like what a beautiful, I don't know, visual concept. Feels good in my belly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was also thinking about something that we've talked about before around 
like is this is this somebody else's energy or is it provoking something within me if they have a defined heart for example like in your case um and I do again this is just hypothesis I don't really know if this is true but what I feel like is happening is that the more that someone is really connected to themselves and has done that like work around their energy I feel like it's more just helpful like it just brings my attention to something within me like when we interact I'm like oh there's a desire that I have and I and I don't really have to question like is this Jess's desire or is it my desire it, it doesn't feel like that it feels like that energy kind of like jolt that you just gave me in that like open, plug in. <laughs> yeah exactly like open receptive place just helped me get in touch with something within me and I feel like that's such a when we can get to that space with people like that's such a beautiful space to be to see that as like not um yeah not something that we have to like avoid or try to I feel like there's a lot of talk around that of like oh your emotional energy like I it's too much for me or I can't or that like be around it um and the space that I'm in and, and of course I'm still in those spaces sometimes where I feel stuff like that but a lot of times I just feel like, oh, wow, like your emotional energy just like brought this thing within me that I was not attending to. And thank you. Like it feels much more reciprocal and helpful yes. than it has in the past. Oh, and this is like leading my head to go towards like being responsible for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's, when we've heard about these conversations of how any of practices and tools are weaponized, it's almost thinking like, hey, your emotional energy is too much for me. And we're just using this as an example, or like you're a defined heart. You're telling me you can, I can do anything right now. I just want to cry, you know, yeah. as an example. And it's yes and or, but all of the, <laughs> the following things. And this is like another like Shrala yoga thing that was like very instilled in us. It's like, you can have like the perfect sequence plan for class, mm -hmm. but how you are is what you're giving to everyone else. So if you come into class stressed, not grounded, people will unconsciously pick up that energy. And I've watched that. And, you know, after learning from this and going to other yoga classes, I was in this class years ago where the instructor was very hard on themselves. They were trying to do a pose. Mm. She couldn't balance and she was just so focused. And I felt, I'm like, well, I'm like, just fine. And then when I go to other classes where the instructor's like, try it out and they have fun, like, I think this, like the, the energy of seeing somebody have fun and passionate, like people mm. talk about passion, that's the energy we can all feel and resonate. And I think that is what, you know, I see when you say somebody who's grounded in themselves, somebody who is sure, somebody who's done the work and like, no, I am here showing up as much as I can authentically. And I'm also not responsible for how you take me. Yes. I, I feel like there's a really crucial point about what you were saying. And it's, you feel free to correct me, but I feel like you. You, this is what you were saying um is like it's not that the person is stressed and that's a problem it's not that the person is in a bad mood it's not that the person is feeling sad like again as we were talking about before it's like you have to go through your process wherever we're at in that thing but it's more around like can I be with that as myself like can I be with the fact that I'm stressed and notice note that acknowledge that when I for example, if I was coming into a yoga class and going to teach, you know, like, can, can I, the, the energy to me totally shifts when someone is like, I'm in a bad mood. Like, I'm just bringing, bringing not so great energy right now. And everything shifts because then you orient yourself differently to that person. And it's more around like that, that awareness, that being able to acknowledge that thing, less about like, that means you should be in a good mood all the time or you should yes. be high energy all the time. It's, I find that when we try to like hide the thing is actually when the energy feels really bad. Like someone's mm. bad mood in itself doesn't feel bad, you know? Like yeah. if someone's sad, it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah But it's, yeah. When, it's when there's like the, the layers on top of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's like, it, it's like covered in some way. Like yeah yeah or like trying to compensate and oh thank yes. you for bringing that part because it doesn't mean that 
because sometimes it could also be interpreted like oh if you're stressed then you shouldn't show up but like you know yes. the idea of perfection and being you know happy all the time no not at all like you can have a shitty day so show up but how can you honor yourself in that moment like still yes. holding space for it the way that is comfortable you don't need to like explain yourself unless you feel pulled to and you don't need to like try to double do anything so yeah. it, it's just so much of it it's really inner work and it's hard to describe right because you yeah. can't just do your inner work and you feel good no there were so many layers in the process but yeah it's it's also like holding being able to hold the shitty and also be present for it now without yes outweighing like oh my day is shitty so let's not talk about anything else in a meeting it's like i'm sorry have a shitty day i'm gonna show up as my best but i'm also feeling shitty like you know it's a two different energies right if you put it plainly like that yeah 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 and i feel like even if we like demystify doing inner work it's like just relating to yourself like can i acknowledge this part of me can i be in relationship with this part of me like it, it doesn't have to be, I also am always like hesitant of like, I, I try to use like self-love or like inner love instead of work, not, yeah. sometimes I feel like that can be like oh, a little too rosy or rose glasses, but I more mean, it doesn't have <laughs> to be, it. what feels like work is that it's uncomfortable. <laughs> like that yes. is what makes it feel like work. It's like, it's just uncomfortable. Like, no, like I don't want to acknowledge this part of myself. And like that, I feel like it's where the work part comes in. But the actual act of relating to myself doesn't have to be hard work. Like you don't have to, again, I feel like we can do these things where it's like, okay, well, you and I have t- had these conversations before. It's like, well, I must meditate every morning for 30 minutes I must eat these particular foods every day. I must do these yoga poses, whatever it is in this very like militant way. <laughs> like it has to be work. I have to like. <laughs> yes. Also yeah. thinking that um, if it's not hard work, then we're not worthy of it. Like that yes. can go into like oh, a whole gosh. Other, yes. a whole other <laughs> tangent. But like, I appreciate you talking about the discomfort so much because, uh, and like I know we've talked about it again about like yeah some things are not as hard as we think it is yes you need to be aware you need to be intentional but you're also not thinking about being aligned and making the best decisions all the time like it's not there like you how can you live in the present where you have a little bit of awareness like you said set and forget read about this once and then like forget (laughs) about it right like what is the balance and only you know what the balance is um, until you try it try it and see okay does it feel worded I'm too much in my head whatever that comes up we can't really manipulate what insights we get we can't really control the energies I have a defined heart can I put my will to work all the time not I can force it but not really like can I manipulate them in that way no and even the way that we come into contact we don't know what's going to come out we don't know what we're amplifying because there's so many other layers there. yes yeah Yes, and I feel compelled to like actually circle back to the beginning of our conversation or closer to the beginning around when you're talking about things like supremacy culture and just like systemic ways of being that it's both, right? Like both of those things, the individually what we can get in relationship with and what we have agency over and also acknowledging the systemic realities and the cultural realities of what we're a part of and how I oftentimes, it's like you can see that the way that we've designed our societies and our worlds make, it actually creates suffering. Like so much of the suffering comes from the things that we, and particularly people in power and with power in that traditional sense, like have created this way of living that actually, um, a lot of the suffering and the and the work that we're having to do is because we're having to like undo all of those things. Whereas, yeah, the work within itself, again, like doesn't have to be work, but, but it can come, yeah, I, just, I think I just want to like name, like it can come both from this like individual place of 
this is really uncomfortable and so it feels like work and it can also come from this systemic place of like but also we've designed these systems so that it is work (laughs) and just holding both of those things both of those realities oh what a beautiful way to bring it full circle (laughs) I know I was like oh (laughs) maybe that's where we needed to go I don't know Oh, I don't know how to describe, but my body is just like, yes, like on fire, like a light bulb, just like flicking. Like, this is this is my energy. Like, not my energy. I love this energy. I'm like, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, this was so fun. <laughs> wow. Look at what came up. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.